Okay, so this car of mine has got a slight shutter on the discs and I've never really changed it because I'm driving this car really without heavy braking and it's 10 years now. So I'm going to have to at some stage do something and there's a slight shutter on the brakes. So I'm getting people out to come and skim the discs and then I might just replace the pads. So if you're going to remove the wheels, you need to take out the wheel spanner and the jack and you use the key to open the boot and then you lift this and there's the spare wheel. Don't turn it on the outside, your fingers are going to get caught on those edges. Just take it in the inside and you just turn it easily like that. Well, that's how much thread you have to unscrew before it's going to release. So, I would say, if you're going to keep the car for a long time, cut an inch off that thread. And that's going to save you a lot of trouble if you have to do this again. Or if you ever have to get the spare wheel taken out. Because that's almost two inches of thread. It's too much. So you unscrew this and you take it apart, you take out the jack and then for these little clips over there, these covers that goes over the nuts, you will need this little tool. Now if you look at these and they started taking them out with a screwdriver, you'll see those marks immediately. But this is what it's for. You just take it off like that. So people don't always know these things. Changing a wheel might be just a basic thing, but then there might be some little tricks like this that just prevents those scratches on those little covers. So sometimes it helps to just watch a video before you start doing it, even though you know exactly what you are going to be doing. So before you jack it up, just loosen up these nuts. Just give it a little bit of a turn. Not too much, because once the wheel is in the air, you're not going to be able to grip it. And then it's just going to turn instead of loosening the nut. Always check for the jack point. There should be a place that is designed for the jack to fit in there. You don't want to just stick the jack underneath the car and start jacking it up because you are going to, going to dent the floor. You have to find the right spot. As you remove all these little things, put it in the back of the car. You don't want it lying around, especially if you've got a lot of kittens dogs and tigers around because believe me a kitten can carry away that little cap and you'll never see it again so once you've removed those nuts you have to get the wheel off and that could be quite a problem i know that on these specific cars and since it's 10 years old and i've still got the original tires on it is actually stuck so I'm gonna have to knock it around a little bit and it should come off sooner or later okay so that wheel is quite stuck and you're gonna have to kick it but you're gonna have to use the bottom part of your foot with your sole of your shoe to just kick it like that and then on the other side now, if you've got high heel shoes on, I think you're going to have a problem in this department. But, that is how you should do it. Just turn it a little. I can see it's moving. Because the wheel can be stuck. And there it goes. And it's done. 
So the guy that is going to skin these discs has just arrived and he's got all his equipment and he's done this a million times. So it's going to be quite easy. Just putting this whole system right here on the hub and it's going to be cutting the disc from both sides at the same time which will also stabilize it a bit more and uh, this is how you do it Now I know quite a lot about this. You need to start to get a shutter, you need to go lower on the speed and higher on the feed. And that is something that people don't really trust to do. But if you have been doing this for a long time, you know exactly that that's work. <laughs> samples over there and we've got spare shops all over the country so it's quite easy you just go in but take a sample with because they're going to just match it up and you'll get the right part the first time and people ask me a lot why did you buy the v8 instead of the v10 in the audi r8 and the quick answer is well this is a 50 zone and if you're going to follow the rules, why would you need a V10 for driving in town? Because that's what I use this car for. I use it to quickly get around here and there. And the V8 is doing the job. So, I'm happy with it. Although the V10 is better, don't get me wrong, but you do pay extra for it. And there's the spare shop over there. I'm just going to have to park around here somewhere. quickly go get these brake pads this is around town some car guards I'm gonna look after my car while I'm out in this pet shop hello hello he just greeted me as I walked closer just look at him absolutely beautiful and he lives here on the street and he greets everybody around here so, pet shop I know the guys here as well I know everybody <laughs> hairdressers and this is a space shop so this is where I come to just get some parts for the car gotta be quick that guy is still busy cutting those discs at my house 
I just picked up the brake pads front and back and I will go and help him to install it quickly and get it done today right got the brake pads getting home I'm gonna park outside first because this guy is busy there with the car and let's see if the Tigers come out to say hi pushing the pistons back this is the way to do it. This is the best way. Don't try and hit it with a hammer. It's not going to work. You're just going to damage it. So we just push it like that. And it will go back. So there's enough space for the new brake pads to go in. And also what you need to watch is that your container is going to fill up with brake fruit. And there just might be too much in the system if you've added more to the system before so just watch for that almost there once those pistons are deeper in they guide themselves and they go in quite easily but that's it got it done New pads are in there, caliper just locates on and then just pushes over side and locking the one on the outside and it's done is thinking what are those guys doing why don't they just sit here under a tree but he's watching us and he'll come and say hi within a few minutes they're just checking it from a safe distance first Diego is slowly coming to see what we are doing here on the car <laughs> and that upward movement of his head and that sound that he made he wants peace that's what he wants but he wants to come and see what we are up to look at his body language that's how he approaches us <laughs> friendly as can be just checking out the car as the discs are being cut Right here. That is a weird noise. And he wants to know what is happening at the moment. He's retreating. He's not just going to come out and be friends with this thing on the car. He wants to know that he's going to be safe. He's rather going to go spend a little bit more time there in the shade. Just showing you again how cautious these tigers are. He's going to check out his bikes. But he's thinking about us all the time. And he knows that he's going to come closer within a few minutes. But he's not just going to let us know that. 
He's got his eyes looking at us all the time as he's thinking about how to approach us. I'm gonna greet him. Diego! Look at him. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> As he's hearing the guy working there in the car, he's watching him and he just thinks about this constantly. This cat is absolutely gorgeous. Well, oh, better get going. Need to do the next one as well. It's cut. And we'll be putting in the brake pads. And there the bottle is starting to overflow. Because we're pushing those pistons back. So that hydraulic fluid needs to go somewhere. So if you've ever filled up that system, it probably will overflow. So we've just placed a little container where the brake pads came in underneath there and I'll we'll be watching that cleaning it off afterwards because that is very corrosive to paint. Just going to pump the brake so that the fluid goes back into the piston area and the container would probably stop overflowing then. That's it. It's there. Where's Diego? Let's just check him out. Now, there he is. Thought he was going back to sleep, but he is still just watching us. He's waiting for someone to make a mistake because you will be ready. <laughs> Always learning how to change the brakes on a car. Gonna be doing the back now, setting up. Hub is going on. I just quickly adjusted the handbrake as well. I'll show you guys on the other wheel how I did it. And I just turned that little clicker in the inside. And when I bought the other car, I got the same in the pickup. But a guy gave me one of the rear brake shoes, so I know exactly. Oh, I don't know because this is the first time I opened it but when I turned it now I just got it adjusted and the handbrake is better so I'll show you guys what I did on the other wheel Pressing those pistons back, the reservoir did overflow again, and we are catching it up right there. So remember that's going to happen, and put something down so you don't have that brake fluid all over 
your paving or whatever it's going to be. And that's the last one. Taking the final cut. It's already pushing back the last piston as well. The machine is doing its job. And uh, yeah, well, so he actually plots this whole machine to the bodywork of the car. And this last one, well, it was 0 0.02 millimeters. That's really very small. And on this distance of almost a meter, let's say 800 millimeters, that makes it very accurate. So to see this machine going up and down, that's okay, because that is on the vertical part. But horizontally, it is set perfect. And uh, yeah, it's only on the Ford Park and Polos that you need to do that. Because the disc part goes right up against the hub. And when you cut it, you have to just make sure that it's centralized exactly on there as well. Cut cast time. It doesn't make a shaving. It just makes like a powder. And it lubricates itself. So the machine is not having a hard time doing it. Yeah, it's still this that would have been a totally different scenario. Diego is still sleeping. He's got better things to do than working on a car. He's waiting for eating time. But he's not letting us out of his sight. He's watching us all the time. So this was the only wheel that didn't clear with the first cut. So he's just taking another cut quickly. It's a small cut just to make sure that the whole thing is clear. Just turning the tool to the other side from the cutting in the other direction. Just as we are about to finish, Diego comes to see why we are not done yet. It's because we have to take an extra cut, Diego. Is that okay with you? Okay. Diego is coming to check out the work that we're doing. And Opal is coming to check out Diego. Looks so easy when someone else is doing it. <laughs> okay, so there's a little gear inside there. There you can see it. I'm gonna just try and zoom in on it. And you just adjust that. If you turn it clockwise, it is going to set this thing higher. So I'm just gonna use the screwdriver and take it up a couple of notches. Now I've taken it up about 30 notches and I don't want to go too far but I've just taken it up another five or six so when you pull the handbrake up 
it's better. It's not going all the way to the top anymore. So that is how you set the handbrake on these. But don't set it too high, because then it's going to touch in the inside all the time, and it's going to overheat and burn those brakes. You'll see smoke coming from the wheels if you drive just a few hundred meters with it. So pay attention to that. And if you feel it's pulling a bit harder, stop immediately. Don't drive it like that. So when the wheels are back on, just pop those little caps back on. And it's really very important to use the tool that comes with the car to remove these caps. Because you can see immediately if someone who didn't know about that removed these caps. And they are never the same again. So yeah use that tool and you will be much more satisfied with the job at the end little opal there she goes she's just running around and we're done well gonna have to clean up that breakfast over there it's one thing that happens when you push those pistons back. It overflows a bit. I've still got the bucket underneath. There it is. I caught most of it, but I'm gonna have to clean it up perfectly because when it rains, all of that oil will float on top of the water and you'll have it everywhere. And that might just make this place really slippery. So you ha really have to clean it up. Those flies are taking a ride on his nose. But Diego has watched us the whole time while we were busy. And I think he approves of the job. <laughs> there he said it again. <laughs> well guys, thanks for watching. I hope that you will be able to change those brake pads and skim those discs quite easily. But it is a day's job. We actually did it in about three hours, but you might just do it in two. Thanks for watching and have a good day.